Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. It's Doug. In today's video, what I'm actually going to be showing you is the room that this video is being recorded in right now. So I built and designed this room along with the help of my brother. And what we actually made it for was so that I could sing, practice and teach inside a room, inside my own house, without disturbing the neighbors and, you know, just keeping the noise low, which everybody I think wants to do when they play music a lot, right? So, just two weeks ago, this was a completely empty room, but maybe a month and a half ago, I started coming up with ideas of like, oh, how am I gonna build this room? Is it gonna be in a closet? Is it gonna be in a completely empty room? What am I gonna use to design it? What size is it gonna be? So, I do wanna take you on a journey in this video of basically how it went from nothing to something. The light's gonna go in there. Awesome. So it's almost done now. All the futons and blankets are against the brackets and frames. The ceilings with the carpet. So yeah, basically, as you can see, there's actually quite a lot of room in here. It's 2.6 meters again, so quite long. And there's enough space for an Ikea table and a nice big office chair. And my guitars are in here. Say hello, guys. And yeah, it's really, really nice and comfortable. But anyway, how about I just show you how I actually succeeded. So I'll show you a clip of me singing and then closing the door. And then I'll show you a clip of me playing really loud music and going outside my house and just showing you that you can't hear it outside, which I'm so happy about. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. Something in the way she woos me. Now can I get into the thing? Yep. Something in the way she moves attracts me like no other lover. Something in the way she woos me. Okay, so let's do a test of the room's soundproofing abilities because the whole reason I built it was so that. I could sing, practice, record, teach inside this studio room thing. So, I'm going to make a sound now, probably as loud as I would sing, like the loudest I would sing, and it would never be constantly this loud, but let's do it. Hey! Something like that, right? I'm going to put the music that loud. We're going to walk outside, close the door, close the door of the studio, go physically outside the house and see if the neighbours can hear it. Okay, I'm going to press play now, and this is probably going to be louder than I would ever listen to music. Like, I really don't think I'll listen to it this loud. Alright, let's do this. So that's the blanket wall. That already covers a lot. And I'm going to seal it. can't close it from the outside, but that's all right. This makes a big difference, this sliding door. Awesome, so now let's go downstairs. So inside the house I can hear it, but as soon as I step outside, literally cannot hear it at all very, actually very faintly. Just quickly, I want to show you the view of what it looks like when somebody's working with me in this studio. Okay, so where you're seeing the video from right now is actually from the inbuilt camera in my laptop. And the audio is coming from my condenser mic with the pop filter right here. 
And yeah, I've got a really bright LED light, which is creating the picture quality to be nice and HD. So if I turn that off, you'll see how poor the picture quality will be. <laughs> so that's very handy. And yeah, this is the exact view that my Skype students actually see me in. So if you ever booked a Skype lesson, this is what you'd see. Like, hey, how you going? Like that. <laughs> but I am very happy with this setup. I had a very similar setup in my old house and I just copied it to be honest, like very easy uh, microphone stand just in the corner there, stretching out, just turn it up loud enough so you can hear the audio and it works really well. So as I'll show you in this video, the whole design of this room is wooden frames basically. So a wooden frame, kind of like a house, timber frame built like this. And then we've got plywood boards around it and on the ceiling. And then I've got futon mattresses, which are like uh, thick mattresses like that, lined up against the sides here. And then two thick blankets behind me and two thick blankets in front of me. And this idea came from back in my old house in Australia when I would, you know, film and record and sing and etc. Just make noise. In my old room, I had a window and I put three layers of blankets on that window. And even though it wasn't the best, because obviously it was just three regular walls and then this wall with the window, which I covered with the three layers of blankets, it actually did noticeably deaden the sound from the outside. Like it really did help with the soundproofing. So I kind of took that concept and thought, damn, all right, let's figure out how I'm gonna do this in my new house, in my new country, etc. This room that I'm speaking in and recording in right now is probably the most suitable room. And I decided that with my brother. We went to work, we started coming up with a design. I already had a design, but he really went to town with it, you know what I mean? So he is actually a professional tradesman, professional tradesperson, and has a background in, you know, engineering and constructing and that sort of stuff. So you can see the, the level of detail that he's went to to help me construct the, the plans. So I didn't think it would actually take that long to build this thing. It kind of got stretched out by, you know, quite a number of days because we might start building it, but <laughs> for the first couple days of just designing it, if you know what I mean, and buying the right products. Like I went to the hardware store three or four times, no, probably about four or five times actually, buying the materials. You can see the kind of the complexity of it all. Like, look at that. <laughs> it's quite insane, actually. And then here are some of my sketches. And so you can see, like, to sit down and actually develop these, it takes time, it takes um, brain power, you know? Anyway, let's move on. I'm just gonna start describing the process of actually building this room and then show you some photos and videos just to give you a clear picture of what's going on and what happened. So basically you've got carpet. I purchased two big pieces of carpet to put on the floor because my house is floorboards. I thought, damn, that's not very soundproof. That's not very insulating. So I better go and purchase the thickest damn carpet I can get. So I'll show you what I bought. Here's where the carpet lines up. Interestingly, <laughs> again, so these are just mats, but they're really big actually. Then moving on to the actual blankets. I always had this idea because there are a few companies that do these things called sound blankets, which I've seen a lot of drummers use. And I had the idea of buying these expensive sound blankets, which are from my understanding, like inches thick, maybe like one inch or probably even more actually thick blankets designed. They look like moving blankets, but they're black and they're designed for sound insulation, sound deadening, and sound absorption. And so what you do is you purchase these um, expensive sound blankets and you put them on the sides of the wall. But I'm in Japan and the shipping of those kind of products was insane, like $700 US just to ship it. The product might be 300 US, which is already expensive, but then you've got to add another $700 US to the shipping price. So it wasn't out of the question, I considered it, but it wasn't ideal. Then I found out about moving blankets and moving blankets were a good alternative because apparently people have designed them to be very thick, to be soundproof. And so I thought, damn, that's a good option. I went onto Amazon and I tried to purchase them. 
but unfortunately they actually cancelled my order the company that said they would supply you um, I got a refund and all that but I was still left very frustrated I thought damn what is going on like how am I gonna build this um, will I just have to order these expensive sound blankets off the American company and I was very close to but luckily I didn't and I thought okay how am I gonna do this how am I gonna do this how am I gonna do this where can I find cheap blankets that are very thick and then what happened was I ended up going to a Japanese furniture store and I saw, at first I looked at the mattresses and I thought, damn, I can buy these mattresses for 40 or $50. And obviously a mattress is like that wide and probably one and a half meters, I don't know, two meters tall, you know, long enough for the human body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Something like that, you know what I mean? I was like, okay, nine times five, you know, $450. All right, I'll just do it. But I found these futons, and if you don't know what a futon is, it's the thing that you know, people sleep on, like a futon mattress, not the wooden planks, the futon mattress. And I thought, damn, all right, this is ideal. And then luckily, when I got home and opened the box, I realized that it not only had a futon mattress in it, but it had a blanket, okay? So I ended up needing to purchase four of them. One box had the futon and blanket in it, I used futons on the sides then I got the blankets and doubled them up for the front and back and that was my brother's idea and yeah I ended up buying a fifth blanket and futon which I stuffed against the window so I boxed out the window I put cardboard against the window first and then I put the futon the very thick futon mattress against the window and I used I um, I used cable ties actually to kind of <laughs> stuff that into the window and then I put another layer of blankets because like I said my experiment of trying to deaden the sound with blankets in my old home worked very well okay so one thing I knew about these soundproof blankets was that they had these things called eyelets you actually need to I, I'm not sure if this is the correct term but they call it grommets like you've got a grommet in the eyelets they um, I believe a grommet is the thing that it's actually like the hole on top of like a curtain, for example, which allows you to put the railing through, you know, hang it on the railing, sorry. And what I did was I bought a kit to be able to punch holes into the material and then I would feed the island in and close it with the, you know, special kit. And I created eyelets inside the futons and inside the blankets to be able to be screwed into the wood. This process took a very long time, but we ended up having to do about 80 of these eyelets inside the blankets and futons. It was an interesting experience, and we ended up just using scissors, and, but it really worked out in the end, you know what I mean? Like, it really did work, so I'm very happy with that process. And for the window, actually, I put the eyelets inside the futons as well, and then I just cable tied it to the curtain railing, so I can show you that as well. It's all been cable tied, and that's an example of one of the, the grommets that I've used, the eyelets. So as you can see, the futons were a white colour, and I thought it would be better for videos and stuff like that if I just got black sheets and hung them, but eventually I found this fabric which um, photographers use for blacking out things. So that wasn't too expensive, I got them on Amazon, and I was able to basically line the futons and just cut it to the right size and then hammer it, uh, sorry, nail nail it to the top of the wood, which is hanging over the top of the futons right now. And I'll show that as well. The design, construction, and building of the actual ceiling and roof is an interesting one too, because that was one of the first things we had to do. Because this whole box thing is actually almost as big as the entire room. so once we actually built the frame, we wouldn't be able to build the top and then put it on top because there wouldn't be enough space to work. So we had to build the ceiling and roof first and then construct everything upwards, like assembling the frame <laughs> going up. And then I actually decided to use the light bulb of the ceiling that I had gotten from Ikea. It had like um, a long, long cable, like a uh, cord, sorry, one meter long, very, very long. And I was able to 
get a hole saw and attach it to the drill that I bought and actually cut through the ceiling and now one of the lights in this room is just the regular light that you would use on the side of the wall. So I thought that was a really cool design idea. I wasn't just going to leave the roof, which is actually made of plywood board, the same as the same material as the sides. I wasn't going to leave that wood because from my understanding of acoustics, that's, I don't know, that, that doesn't seem right. And then for the acoustics of the ceiling, I actually bought these squares of carpet, which I just found at the hardware store. I tried to get it as thick and sound insulating as possible, sound absorbing as possible. And I used five screws on each as well as um, some glue and I pasted it on top of the ceiling and then it didn't really hold so I would use my drill and drill upwards into the ceiling five five screws and just maybe there is about let's say you know 30 squares or something like that I'll show you so this is the ceiling I've put these squares of carpet in and it actually required five screws each so look one two three four five you can kind of see the designs with the the holes. They're all screws, very shallow screws. And here's the light bulb. You can't see that because I've attached the light cover on it. And that leads me to something else when I'm talking about the construction of this whole thing, is that I actually had to purchase everything from scratch. Not just obviously the wood and uh, screws and stuff like that. I had to buy a drill, I had to buy a saw, um, gloves, sandpaper, the eyelets. Back in my home in Australia, I had all these kind of tools. My dad had all these kind of tools that I would always use. Like I've been doing arts and craft and wood construction since I was like five or six years old. And I've always had these tools, but you know, living independently, living, me, living by myself, I don't necessarily have all this stuff. So that was an interesting experience having to go to these hardware stores and purchasing drills and saws and stuff like that. It was a good experience, but what I'm saying is that it added a lot to the cost of the build because, you know, not even having a hammer, not even having a screwdriver, it all adds up. Now, the last thing that I'll describe is actually the front of the whole studio, which is actually where the door is. And the difficult thing about building this was that there's basically a plank of wood at the top, a part of the frame, with these blankets just hanging, you know, everywhere else. The sides and the back are all attached and, you know, you can't put your hand through it. But what I'm looking at in front of me is just hanging blankets. There's nothing behind it because behind the blankets, imagine my hands, the blankets are just flat down. There's a door in front of it and that door is the whole wall and you can open it with hinges. And I came up with that idea like a month and a half ago. Whenever I decided to build a frame, I decided I want a door on hinges and it's going to open like that. And then I'll show you that now just because it's a bit hard to explain. I actually have to lift when I open and it was designed like that so that it was very airtight. Sound tight. <laughs> so yeah, then you can see that's one of the blankets. And that's got the, that's two layers of blankets actually. And then that's got the black sheet on top. and. Yeah, that freely hangs so that I'm able just to walk in like this. And then I would shut the door like this. I lift it up. And shut like that. Another thing also was that my brother wanted um, some kind of latch or lock to be able to close this door because our idea behind that was that we thought it'd be more sound deadening and soundproof by having the door be able to completely shut and close so that the front, back, sides were all completely locked in, no movement, and yeah, basically building a closet inside a room, but a much, much larger site. What it's like to close it, so I would lift it up like that, and then lock it, like that, put that there, put that there, just cover that up, <laughs> and it's all nice and black. There's just two more things I want to talk about and actually one of them is that we actually had to pull an all-nighter just to get this done which I hadn't done for a while like you know I think everybody in their later teenage years or teenage years just be a bit silly and stay up all night playing games or something like that but 
it was a good experience to just stay up all night and finish this off. And we had to do that because my brother was only here with me for another couple of days. And we thought, damn, we have to get this done. Like, we're busy the next day. Let's just do it. You know what I mean? And that, that was funny. And even though we were burnt out beyond our minds, like, our brains are fried. We're just there hammering away, making the eyelets, just, just getting it done, basically. But it was a good experience. And, um, yeah, I was happy because it really pushed us in the end. Anyway, so that's it for today's video. I'll wrap it up here. It actually took about three weeks, I would say, of planning and thinking about it and going to different stores and trying to find the right stores and trying to find the right products. And um, hell, I even went to one store where they wouldn't sell me the items. And I said, why? Like, why can't I buy here? And they explained to me that this store is for, contra uh, for contractors only, people with contracts with us. And I thought, what? But what I want is right there. Can't I just buy it? No. You can't, you need membership. And I was like, what? So um, there were a lot of challenges and obviously like that Amazon package being canceled. But in the end, it was a great experience and I've got the room right now and it will always be an interesting story to tell and good memories for me and my brother. And yeah, I, I just really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to support me, I would say the best way is to do a Skype lesson with me. I would really appreciate that. And I think it'd be really cool to see you in this studio over the internet making some music. All right. Thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.